Scott Spears. Welcome to Scott Spears Now. Today we're joined by uh, two very interesting people, two people very important to the state of Ohio. The 40th Treasurer of the United States of America, Mary Ellen Withrow, and the current Miss Ohio, Alyssa McCracken. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for having us. My pleasure. It's, it's yes. Mary Ellen's a regular, and thank goodness for that. <laughs> well, I love to see Mary Ellen every time she comes on. Today we're going to look at some of Mary Ellen's memorabilia. I asked her if she would do this, bring some memorabilia in from her days as U.S. Treasurer, and uh, we're going to do that in just a moment. But first I want to talk to Alyssa. I have not seen you since, uh, would have been two days after you were yes. crowned Miss Ohio, What's it been like to be Miss Ohio now for a couple months? Oh my gosh, it's been wonderful. I've been having a great time. My schedule is very busy, but I'm certainly enjoying being busy. Yeah, each day is a new adventure. I'm just traveling around the state. I actually just returned from Orlando a couple weeks ago. We had the Miss America's Outstanding Teen Pageant down there, and we did a lot of filming for the actual Miss America pageant in January. And we watched the Miss America's Outstanding Teen Pageant, Miss South Carolina's Outstanding Teen one, but Sarah Esch, Miss Ohio's Outstanding Teen, did a great job. And it was nice to be down there and meet all of my fellow Miss America contestants. And I've just been staying busy making appearances. I was at the Obet's Zucchini Fest yesterday, and I got to speak to all the festival queens there. I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, fairs and festivals, so I've enjoyed that. When you speak at these events, because I'm sure you get called on to speak a lot, what do you speak about? I mainly speak about, so far, um, my platform, which is Stop Cyberbullying, and also the benefits of pageantry in general, because they've really helped shape and transform my life, and especially when I'm speaking to those young festival queens, I want them to see all of the positive things that can happen because of pageants in their life, so that they should keep, keep going and keep competing. I would say uh, the general public, I believe, is uh, the, the ratings on Miss America and, and Miss USA and all of the, those things have gone down over the years, and I think pageants have changed. They used to call them beauty pageants, now they call them scholarship pageants. Mm -hmm. In your mind, what has changed? What is the difference between the old beauty pageant and the scholarship pageant? That's a great question. Actually, Miss America has, has been at its highest, highest rating in like the past 10 years this oh, past really? year. So they are really boosting their ratings. And I think what's kind of happened with the pageants, at least in my opinion, at, is Miss America, the girl, has become less real and just seems perfect and unattainable. And so as Miss Ohio, what I'm trying to do is just be very real and relatable. My life isn't perfect. I'm nowhere near perfect. But I think that gives the young girls a good role model to look up to, and it proves that you're not maybe you're not perfect, but you can still achieve these vast goals that you have. Wh for somebody who looks at you, sees you today in the crown looking great, they say, well, that, you know, her life's not as bad as mine. Her life is perfect. <laughs> What's not perfect about you? What would you say are your hang-ups in life? Um, you know, I think a lot of it stemmed from my cyberbullying in middle school. I was cyberbullied. It was a very devastating experience for me to go through. It ruined my self-confidence and my self-esteem, and that's something that I still struggle with today. I mean, of course, you have to have a certain level of confidence to put yourself out on stage and be judged and things like that, but there are still days when I don't maybe feel as pretty as I should or I like second guess things because it was a really hard thing for me to go through. And I think then some of my flaws are I don't always look perfect. I sweat a lot in the heat. People are always like, it's so hot out here, you're not sweating. Oh yes I am, <laughs> I might just hide it well. <laughs> but there are times when in situations I don't know exactly what to do and I'm not perfect, but that's okay. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. Now, I want to touch on this cyberbullying. We talked about this when I had you on the radio back in, in uh, June, June, I believe yeah. it was. Um, but uh, for people who don't understand that term or get it, uh, what is it and what happened to you? Cyberbullying? Cyberbullying. It is basically just bullying via the Internet or through technology. Um, I experienced it through MySpace and instant messaging the most, but now it's constantly through Facebook, Twitter, um, texting, all types of different technology, and the beauty and the horror of the internet and technology is that you have the ability to be anonymous. And with me, I was cyberbullied through instant messaging, and I didn't know who it was because their screen names were made out so that I couldn't place their identity. So it was very scary, and it was a hard thing to go through, and I was really just ashamed that it was happening to me, and I didn't know what to do about it. I felt depressed, scared, alone. 
And so I just read what they wrote to me. I would never respond because I never knew what to say. I didn't know how to deal with the situation. But then finally I opened up and told my mom and she was able to help me. And now looking back on those experiences, I'm fortunate that I went through them because now I can share my story with others and teach them how to respond and what to do in those situations so they don't have to suffer like I did. Hmm. What kind of things were done without going too deep into it, uh, but I'm sure you've had to explain it before, what happened exactly? They, they got on the instant messenger. What yeah, did they do? I just received very rude messages. Me, like, you're ugly, worthless, stupid, all sorts of things. And they were so consistent. Um, and I think when we all go through those awkward stages in our middle school years, and you already don't have much self-confidence, and when someone is constantly throwing these rude messages at you, it doesn't really help much. So it was really hard to go through that. But um, like I said, I'm glad I can at least tell about what to do. Yeah. What, what should you do? My three-step me method that I explain is stop, block, and tell. If you feel that you are being bullied online, first stop communicating with the bully. Don't tell them you're going to stop. Just do it. Block them with technology. Now there's always a way to block the person or get their number blocked if they're texting you. And then tell someone. Tell an adult. That's really the most vital step. And many people are scared to tell someone, but that's so important. And I didn't tell someone. That was my big mistake. And so I tell the students that I talk to, you know, tell someone. And if you're scared to go tell an adult, get your best friend and have them go with you to tell an adult because they'll know what to do and they'll know how to intervene. You know, this may seem like a strange question, but uh, I, I guess when I was in high school and middle school, uh, computers were not there as much as they are now. Um, when somebody cyber bullies you, isn't it just between you and them? I mean, can anybody else see it, really? And why does that hurt so much? It depends. My cyberbullying was just between me and whoever was bullying me, but I've seen other cases of it. People will make, um, for example, they'll make up Facebook pages of people where yeah. it is just so people can go there and post mean comments about a certain person in school mm -hmm. so that it's visible to the entire world. And so... It really just depends on the situation, but it certainly can be huge. And it hurts either way. It hurts if it's just w coming from one person and you don't know who it is, or if it's coming from multiple people and you know that everyone else can see it. I think you're right. I think in those big formats, that can be a huge problem. But I guess when it, it to me, it would seem like somebody sending a letter. Y you'd re you don't know who it is. You don't know why they're doing it. You don't know why they're saying it. Nobody else really sees it. Why is it so impactful? It's just so impactful because someone's attacking who you are and how you look as a person, and they're attacking everything about you. And especially for me in those years when I was, you know, 13, 14, um, and didn't really have a lot of friends or wasn't very confident and I was very awkward, um, just hearing those things just really hurt and really just made me feel even worse about myself. Stop, block, and tell. Stop, block, That's and tell. very good. Very uh, good. I have a question. Yes. Uh, did you ever find out who did it? I did not. Oh. After I finally opened up to my mom and told her, we kind of decided to just let it go and try to get over it and get over what mm -hmm. happened. Um, it would have been interesting to know who it was, yeah. but I've kind of moved on from knowing who it was, and a lot of yeah. kids that I speak with, they ask me questions. The question and answer part's always my favorite because they kind of ask the craziest things sometimes, but they're like, well, would you ever be friends with your bullies again? And I say, well, no, I wouldn't be friends with them, but I would forgive them. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be friends with someone that treated me like that. Mm -hmm. so. I think forgiveness is the key in a lot of things. I mm -hmm. agree. Mary Ellen, I, I think you're kind of with me here in that, you know, when we were in school, there was no cyberbullying, really. What do you make of no, something? No, there wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but I just got a hate letter the other day. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Yes, from uh, my being involved in, in politics. Um, the, the uh, person that sent it had um, my address from where I used to live, evidently got it off the Internet, and had um, then had Waldo, Ohio, or Cardington, Ohio, or Marion, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it went to my old address, and, and uh, so I did get it. And, uh, of course, they didn't sign their name, um, and uh, it was a very nasty letter. And, of course, I've gotten other letters, too, when I was in office. But uh, I was a little surprised at this one. <laughs> what, d I mean, do you want to tell us what, what were they attacking oh, they were you for? they upset because I was supporting Obama. Oh. Yeah. But you did during the first election. Yes. 
Did anything like this happen then? No, because I wasn't opening up headquarters and everything. Oh. I was in Maryland, and everybody there is a Democrat. <laughs> well, a <laughs> little different, a little different in Ohio. Uh, w when something like that happens, does that scare you? That's, that's didn't scare me. It, it uh, kind of disgusted me, but I, it's not bothering me, except I just now <laughs> mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, uh, and I used to get a lot of mail from uh, people in uh, mental institutions, <laughs> <laughs> which was very interesting. And this one person would uh, write to me every week read religiously and, um, and was pretty knowledgeable about uh, what they were talking about. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting uh, what comes over the internet or through the mail and uh, yes we have all sorts of things that uh, we deal with in in life when people don't agree with you you know mm -hmm. when you open something like that or an email when you open something like that does it does it hurt does it bother does it impact in any sort of way because I think that's probably the point they're trying to make yes it is yeah. I w what I was trying to figure out was if it was a man or a woman uh, and and I don't know that th it would matter but I just wanted to know <laughs> and I think it was a woman's handwriting but believe me she went through everything uh, that uh, she disagreed with she had it all it was a sheet of paper that was on both sides solid <laughs> solid things that she didn't <laughs> agree with. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't know people still wrote letters, so that's amazing. Well, that <laughs> she, you know, I thought, well, this this person felt very strongly about this, and I, I thought it's such a shame because she she doesn't understand a lot of what she's saying. Um, I'm afraid people are too gullible in what's being said on some of the uh, programs. Yeah. Uh, we talked before we went on the air. You have been opening up, obviously, Democratic headquarters throughout Ohio and uh, gave a speech recently here in Marion last mm -hmm. Thursday night. Um, how involved and important do you feel this election is? Are you more involved in this one maybe because you're back in Ohio or maybe because it looks like it might be close than you have been in past years? Well, I don't know that I'm more involved. It's just that I'm back home and... And it, it seems, um, I guess it seems closer to me. I didn't get involved in uh, the campaigns when I was in Maryland. As I said, it didn't seem like it was, and I just didn't get involved politically in Mary Maryland. But um, coming back home, everybody knows what I've done and where I've been. And so... Um, and the reason I'm involved is because I think it is very important because um, I, I see the country um, and, and hope that we, we don't go back to where we were. Um, uh, living through the uh, Bush years uh, was hard on everybody. And um, so anyway, I, I'm getting very political on your show here, but... Uh, I can't help it. That's the way I am. <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. You know, I think I, I, if people are honest in what they say, everybody should be given the forum to say it. All right. I agree. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Uh, now, Mary Ellen, let's take a look at some of that yes, uh, well memorabilia brought, that you I brought, brought along. I brought something for you to look at. Oh, here. great. Yeah, if I get it right side up, yeah. Um, this oh, was done in, in San Francisco. At a um, at a coin show, and uh, what they would do, uh, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, they are the people you know that print our money. Uh, they would take a spider press, which is an antique press, and it's very big. I mean, uh, getting it there would be a problem, I would think. But anyway, they would take this spider press and they would. Um, take some engravings that uh, we had at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, and there's there's many, many engravings there. You can go through whole notebooks of, of engravings that go way, way back. And at that time, we were still doing postage stamps, so there's two postage stamps on there, and uh, then some other figure that I don't know who it is. But 
This was done on silk in 1997. And uh, the reason I liked it so well is because it was done on silk, which I thought made it special. And that was something that they hadn't been doing before. It was uh, a new venture for them. Uh, and I, you know, the things that um, the things that they can create with their their presses, um, you know, the the money is the the thing they make, but. Uh, the other things that have been in history are just fascinating. So anyway, that's that's what I brought. Uh, that's that's very interesting. And and again, I want to mention to the people because if they don't know, uh, they certainly should. That every third Sunday at Primrose, mm -hmm. they have a, there's a whole room with a lot of the great things you've collected over the years. Yes. Um, uh, I, I don't know if we're going to continue on the third Sunday, but we can say that uh, until I figure out otherwise because um, we haven't discussed this at Primrose. I just finished my third Sunday, um, my third month, and uh, we had a good crowd, and um, uh, everyone seems to enjoy it, so I it's fun. I, I mm -hmm. think it would be. Yeah. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back with Miss Ohio 2012, Alyssa McCracken, 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow, and talk about some things that have been going on in the news, some odds and ends. Be back right after this. Are you looking for affordable office space in Marion? The professional building located at 685 Delaware Avenue is the place for you. For more information, call 740-383-6803. Office space is now available. Again, telephone number 740-383-6803. Scott Spears back with you here on Scott Spears Now, joined by 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow and... Uh, Miss Ohio 2012, Alyssa McCracken, going to get into the current events file now and uh, discuss, I think that's what we should do, discuss what's going on in the world. Uh, political issue, certainly uh, in the news right now, leading up to the November 6th battle in the pivotal swing state of Ohio, a tussle over who is allowed to vote during the 72 hours leading up to Election Day is well underway, involving Obama, Romney, and national military groups. Uh, let, this all started in the summer of 2011 when Republican Governor John Kasich signed a bill that placed new restrictions on early voting and absentee ballots. Democrats who rely heavily on absentee programs and early votes fought the law and in September 2011 submitted enough petition signatures to put it on hold and trigger a direct referendum on the law's future. Republicans were worried that a direct referendum on the law that most Democratic voters were likely to oppose would galvanize them to flock to the polls in greater numbers come November, aiding Obama and Democrats up and down the ballot. So Kasich signed a bill in May reversing the law. However, the repeal also reaffirmed a change that ended early voting three days before Election Day and Obama has currently sued the state of Ohio because of that to get that overturned because they are going to allow military groups um, who tend to vote Republican, that's just the way it goes, uh, to vote uh, in that prior three days, but they will no longer allow uh, regular citizens who are not in the military to vote 72 hours before the election. And that is still in place, and a legal battle is pending with Obama in the state of Ohio. And uh, let's start with Mary Ellen on that one. What do you think? Well, I think it's pretty disgusting because, after all, we should have everybody vote that wants to vote. I don't care how they're voting. And I think it's very disgusting that and the Secretary of State is involved in this as well, Mr. Houston. Uh, that uh, Ohio would be narrow-minded on this. And uh, I have had people monitor voting, and uh, it was the election of, of uh, let's see, what year was it, where people stood in line for hours and hours in Cleveland and Columbus mm -hmm. and uh, w were on their break from their jobs and couldn't stay because they had to get back to their job, and uh, I, I just think it's um, uh, going the wrong direction for any government to 
to take that uh, stand. Well, what I can't figure out, Mary Ellen, is is I'm not sure that this is a – they've turned it into a Democrat-Republican issue. But I'm not sure that it necessarily is. I think it's just a right-to-vote issue, whether you are Democrat or Republican. I, I think that they have narrowed this down to say that – Democrats will benefit if people get to vote three days earlier, and Republicans will benefit if the military gets to vote, but nobody else does. I think that's over over analyzing it a bit. I'm sure those facts are true, but was it done with political motivation? If it was, then it should obviously be I'm fixed. sure that it was. Look at Pennsylvania. There's another state where they're having problems of the same type, where they have to have a vo- an ID a picture ID, and you, you're getting into people that maybe uh, aren't able to get out and get a photo ID and, and uh, are elderly. Um, it gets into a race issue. It, it's, it's, it's heavy. Um, it, it's just not right. But is it that? That's what I wonder. Is it political or is it a race issue? Or it's is political. It's political. Absolutely, Scott. It's political. So this is a move by Republicans Absolutely. to defeat Obama. Well, look who, who you named there. Well, that's true, Casey. Yeah, well, think about it a moment. <laughs> well, that's, that's true. I, I would agree with that yeah. fact. I just I can't believe that all groups wouldn't be together on this one, that Republicans and Democrats would not say, why are we denying people the right to vote? Well, it's the advantage to the Republicans, so why would they say anything? I, I still hope people know right from wrong. Well, I hope so, too. Yeah. I, I hope they do something about that. Hmm. And we'll see. We'll yeah. see, because it's mm-hmm. coming up in November. Alyssa, what do you think about that? Well, I think that anyone that wants to vote should have the right to vote, but um, I really don't have much more to say. That's, that's that. fine. You know, it, we, we talked about this, and it, it's been the case with all Miss Ohio, so no big deal here. And we're going to move out of the political realm in a second. Yeah. But I'm sure there are things as Miss Ohio that you are allowed and not allowed to talk about. Politics, I'm sure, is one they say, you know, it'd be nice if you'd stay away mm-hmm. from. Is there anything else they say stay away from? Um, religion. They never really come out and say no. don't talk about religion. I think yeah. religion is one of those things that you can talk about, but as long as you don't push it on other people. Are you are you in your off the clock when you're not Miss Ohio appearing as Miss Ohio? Are you allowed to have an opinion? Yes. Really? Yeah. As long as you don't say you're Miss Ohio when you're Miss Ohio. Basically, I can still live uh, some like a normal life, still carry on as I normally would as Alyssa McCracken, not as Miss Ohio, but um, I try to refrain from just being controversial. Before this, were you political? Not really. I mean, I did not that knowledgeable about politics, to be perfectly honest, and um, I think they're just... They, they just get really ugly, and I think people don't focus on what's right for the country. They focus on what's best for themselves, and that really frustrates me with politics, so I just try to kind of stay out of it. Uh, I, and I think uh, people will do what they do come <laughs> November, one way or the other. We're going to move away from politics <laughs> here. Now, this is something I think everybody can have an opinion on. Caitlin Newtbar, the Oklahoma High School valedictorian who was denied her diploma after she used the word hell in her graduation speech, said on Wednesday... She has no plans to apologize. I'm still not going to issue an apology because I'm not sorry for that, Newt Barr said in an interview on the Today Show. I'm sorry for other things. I'm sorry for the problems that this has caused the school, especially the teachers. I've heard that they've been getting calls from numerous people, and that would be nice if that would stop. Newt Barr graduated from Prague High School with a 4.0 grade point average. Her father, David Newt Barr, told KFOR-TV, but school administrators told him that Caitlin would have to submit a written apology in order to get her diploma. We went to the office and asked for the diploma, and the principal said, your diploma is right here, but you ain't getting it, Principal. <laughs> the principal said. It's nice, you ain't getting it. Close the door, we have a problem. David Newtbar said, in her speech, inspired by a similar address in Eclipse, the Twilight Saga, Caitlin recounted how annoying it is to be constantly asked what she wants to do as graduation approached. How the hell do I know is what she said, according to her father. I've changed my mind so many times. Miss Newtbar prepared an appropriate speech, which was approved by the high school principal, Rick Martin, Prague school superintendent, said in a statement. 
Unfortunately, she did not present the speech as written and use language that was inappropriate for a graduation exercise. In the version she submitted to the school for approval, hell was heck. But in the version she delivered at graduation, hell it was. Uh, Prague's high school mascot, it's worth noting, is a red devil. <laughs> but uh, so there you go. What do you think? Should uh, Caitlin Newt bar Alyssa get her diploma? She said hell. The schools say hell no. Oh, my. <laughs> well, I don't think she should have said that word in her speech. Um, and I think I think she should apologize before she gets her diploma, personally. Or write, write really? an apology letter or whatever it may be. Now, that's interesting. Now, just for saying hell, mm -hmm. why is that? Just because um, I'm sure there are a lot of young children in the audience and I'm sure that their parents didn't want them to hear that. And so I just think she should have been more mindful of her audience and respectful of them. And so she should have not gone off of what was pre-approved and not just done that. What do you think, Mary Ellen? Uh, what kind of a speech was this? Was she valedictorian or why yes, was she? Oh, yes, valedictorian. She, she should know better. Then yeah, she should really know better than to say that, Yeah. Well, see, I, I got to tell you, on this issue, I, I don't understand. If you have a 4.0 grade, grade average and you've been chosen to give the speech and you told them you were going to say heck, I mean, this saying hell, I mean, you hear hell in church all the time. I mean, is that a big... Yeah, but it's in a different way. It's, it's not the same. <laughs> well, I, I understand that, but I, I think hell is such a tiny word to hold the valedictorian's diploma. Just We do have freedom of speech. I don't think it ends at the, the high school graduation. Yes, but there's certain words that you just shouldn't use in a valedictorian speech, and that's one of them, I would say. I think she made a very poor choice, and so there, that's the way I feel. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I can't, I, you know, for me, honestly, I think... You, you make a choice every day of what words you're going to use, but uh, words are just that. They're words, and you do have freedom of speech. And I, the written apology, what's that going to do? I mean, is that going to make it that it didn't happen? I mean, it, it happened. It's over. Okay. Uh, could I just ask you, aren't there a lot of words that you can't use, Scott? <laughs> there are. There are. <laughs> All right. But, but I can say hell, but I normally wouldn't say hell unless I was, was quoting somebody. Yeah, see. So, so yeah. but I think... But I could use it if I wanted to. I just think holding back, I don't think it, at a graduation speech there's a law. Now, for radio or television, there's a law that says you can't say these. Yes, but you're an example. A valedictorian is, is an example to all the people that weren't valedictorians. Well, I think you're <laughs> right. I think you're right. But what if a teacher said hell in the classroom, which I'm sure they have? Oh, I'm sure they have, too, but they're not doing it in front of uh, all the parents and everyone else. I, I would think if one, the most minor word that you could say if you were going to be profane would be hell. I, I mean, hell is the most minor one that would even get any recognition. I think some of the other ones would really amp people up. But hell, I mean, people say hell all the time. I, I, I would be hard-pressed to imagine that there were people in that auditorium who hadn't heard the word hell before. I'll bet there aren't very many speeches, though, that have hell in it. I mean, if you would look at the speeches that are given over the years, people don't use hell very much. I mean, I haven't heard it. No, I, th I don't think they uh, use it very much. I guess just my problem is is that this girl worked four years for a 4.0 grade point well, she average. She should know better. But one moment in her life. I don't I mean, care. She should know better. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I, I just hope they give it to her. And she's not going back. So I guess she says this is freedom of speech. She, she, she's not. So I, what do you think should happen to her? They have to give her the, they can't deny that she graduated. Right. But I think she needs to own up to her actions and raise a written apology. That won't erase it from happening, but at least she'll admit that maybe she shouldn't have done that. But don't you think the schools are a little too amped up here? I mean, what if it accidentally came out? I mean, people have accidentally said things before. You're in the moment. You're nervous. You're giving a speech. Whoops, I said something I shouldn't have. Uh, you know, I think I think a good example of that would be our, uh, I'm not sure they separate this, but the Miss Ohio who's in the Miss USA pageant, who last year when right. they asked her in mm -hmm. the pageant, um, what movie represents women's liberty? And she said, "Pretty woman, mm -hmm. where the but woman was a prostitute." That, that wasn't a bad word. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but is that worse? Is it, but is that better or worse? Is, is innuendo 
Would it be better if she... Did, I don't, it doesn't change the meaning of what she said, I guess. You know, all she said was, how, how the hell do I know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I think there has to be freedom of speech. I think when you start dialing it back, then we really get in trouble. Well, I agree there has to be freedom of speech, but there's a place where you use words like that, not, not in a valedictorian speech. You, I, I mean, anybody would know not to use that. I, I don't know how she got a four point if she doesn't know enough to say not to say <laughs> hell. <laughs> I, I, we'll just have to agree to disagree on this one, I <laughs> yeah, think, because right. I, 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 th I just think hell is such a minor one, and, and boy, we've got much bigger problems. Let's worry about the people who didn't graduate, not the valedictorian <laughs> who said hell. You know, where the hell were those people who didn't graduate? They should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to move right along today. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy Lee Gifford, host of the Today Show, has joined forces with stepdaughter Vicki Gifford Kennedy in accusing Taylor Swift of crashing a wedding last weekend. Gifford announced on the Today Show that, yes, Taylor Swift turned up at the Kennedy uh, wedding uninvited and revealed that she was the one who suggested the country singer be asked to leave. The truth is, because I was there, Vicki's account of what happened is accurate. She said to me, as it was happening, I'm really not happy about this. She also confirmed that Taylor was asked to leave, not just once, but twice. Awkward. I'm not sure that she knew that she wasn't invited. Well, this is a celebrity thing, but in general, is it bad to show up at a wedding you weren't invited to? Is that Our such a horrible <laughs> thing? Uh, well, I guess... Uh, I guess there was a connection here, though, wasn't there, between Taylor Swift and the uh, the bride or the groom? Yeah, she yeah. she she had a relationship with him, but I guess she, she either didn't realize she wasn't invited or she showed up anyway. Mm hmm Is that is that horrible? Well, um, you know, it depends on how the people that sent out the invitations, which are the parents, how they felt about it. Didn't they didn't want her there? Or well, I guess they asked her to leave. Well, then she should have left. Yeah. But doesn't that, if she didn't know she wasn't invited, isn't that horrible, though, to make somebody leave? Well, you know whether you're invited or not. Oh, yes. well, okay. So yeah. so we, we'll say then that she didn't know she was invited. The fact that she came, I mean, at that point, is it really important to make them leave? Is that important to make a big scene? Well, I wouldn't think, and especially if it's Taylor Swift, I think I'd leave her there. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, yeah, right. I, yeah, I don't understand this. I mean, if somebody, <laughs> if, if you were getting married and somebody came to your wedding who was not invited, would you make it a big deal to send them packing? Well, if it was Taylor Swift, no, right. I exactly. love her. But what um, if Taylor Swift said hell in her graduation speech? Would that be okay? <laughs> well, would we okay it then? Probably not. <laughs> You're funny. Because she's even more of a role model then. <laughs> but, um, like, I haven't been to many weddings. I'm not getting married for quite some time, I hope. But um, I think that your wedding's like your special day, and if someone's there that you don't want there, you should ask them to leave because it's your, it's your day. It's your one big day. But here's what I don't understand. If you're the bride or the groom, shouldn't you be more concerned with being married than yes. who's showing up at the wedding. I can't imagine. I, I'll tell you, this happened to me once, and I'll tell this story without using the words. Uh, I was invited to a wedding one time, and I didn't go, but I sent a card. Mm -hmm. And I, if <laughs> you know about this. And the card, I said, I, and I honest to God put my hand somewhere. I, I, I put in there, I was trying to be comical. And I said, it was a very nice wedding card. I paid you know good money for this card. And I put in there, Sorry, I can't make it to this wedding. I'll try to make it to the next one. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I was trying to be funny. That's what I put in there. Honest to goodness. <laughs> and that night, I got the nastiest call from from the father of the bride oh. telling me that I had just upset her horribly when she was opening up her. And I said to myself, on your wedding night, don't you have more important things to be doing than checking out my card and getting so upset? I mean, I think people worry too much, <laughs> don't you? Well, yeah, but on your wedding day, I think you're full of emotion, and I think anything bad will just be, you know, blown out of proportion. I see. I would just let it go. I'd say, put, you know, throw another fish or chicken on the on the table. I think it'll be fine. Would you kick somebody out, Mary Ellen, on your wedding day? Well, it would depend on who it was, you know. Uh, if it was somebody I couldn't stand and they came, you know, just to be difficult, I'd kick them out. But 
Otherwise, no, I wouldn't bother it. What the, if Governor Kasich showed up to your <laughs> wedding? <laughs> Would that be okay? <laughs> <laughs> Scott, you're just trying to get me in trouble now. <laughs> no. Well, uh, I could tell you some stories, but I'm just not going to. <laughs> We're going to hold off on that. <laughs> well, I do want to touch on this. I don't think this has anything to do with... Oh, this is political in a little bit, but not as bad as anything else. Now, we're going to hold off here for a second. Because the Republican convention is coming up. We we should mention that. that yes, the national there's, a, there's a hurricane uh, headed that way. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that would you, uh, that makes you tear up, doesn't it, Mary Ellen? I should say that. Uh, yeah. Governor Chris Christie, though, is anchoring the event as the keynote speaker, one mm -hmm. of the main keynote speakers. Uh, he'll speak on Tuesday night, uh, Ryan on Wednesday, and Romney on Thursday. Ann Romney will also speak on Tuesday night. Uh, tomorrow, Monday's events have been postponed because of the hurricane. But uh, Chris Christie is now the big deal in the Republican Party. What do you make of that, Mary Ellen? Oh, I think he's interesting. Yeah, he's uh, very forceful. Um, I'm anxious to hear his speech. Yeah, I think it'll mm -hmm. be very interesting. I think it'll be a good speech, yeah. Alyssa, what do you think of uh, just conventions in general? Do you pay much attention to them? Do you like them? Do you like Chris Christie? Is he an interesting guy? To be perfectly honest, I don't know who he is. <laughs> well, it's a, he's not. He's not. He hasn't hit the mainstream yet. He's the, he's the uh, governor New, of New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. And, New Jersey. and uh, we don't know much about New Jersey, do we? No, we <laughs> no. don't. We keep New Jersey out. What uh, for you, Alyssa? What I what don't you like to talk about? Uh, you as a person. What is the? <laughs> is that it? Oh boy, this has been a fun day then, hasn't it? Uh, I nailed it right on the head today, didn't I? No, but what do you really feel about that girl who said hell? That's okay, isn't it? No. Why is that so bad? Well, I look at it. I'm gonna wrap up the show with this. I'm really <laughs> stuck on this girl who said hell. Being a pageant girl and being Miss Ohio, I know that I'm a role model, and her being valedictorian, she's a role model to other people, yeah. and she should know better, and she shouldn't have done that. Wait, but I, I guess I'm talking about the severity of the word hell. I mean, aren't there worse things to say in graduation Certainly, speeches? Certainly, there are worse things she could have said, but it was still bad. It still doesn't cover up the fact that what she said shouldn't have been said. Is there any uh, uh, fact to the idea that when she presented the speech, heck was okay, but hell's not? Is there a whole lot of difference there? Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. Between heck and hell? Absolutely, yes. Well, now, what's the big difference between heck and hell? It, it's just the implication of, of the word. I mean, it's just not the thing to say. Well, I think I, I agree with you that she probably shouldn't have said it. But I guess what I'm saying is, is, is this really a good enough reason to hold her diploma? The, the valedictorian, the person you've heaped praise on, I mean, is that how we go in this country? I, I don't think we can say freedom of speech and then impose consequences on people. I mean, is the only consequence we don't send you to jail? Because that would, because this seems like a consequence. Well, freedom of speech. Uh, uh, this isn't about freedom of speech, as far as I'm concerned. It's just a, a thing about a choice of words, a word that's not acceptable. Evidently, um, evidently, the super, was it the superintendent right. decided this? Um, I I don't know. Did she, she submitted this? a copy of this to somebody before and had heck in it. I under is that the way I right. should understand that? Right. And she changed it. In the moment. Well, then she should apologize and... Well, I, I, I just... Uh, my worry is this, and I, I just feel this as media or as a United States citizen. Uh, we don't need to protect speech that is popular because popular speech nobody objects to. The speech you have to protect is the unpopular speech, and obviously this was unpopular. Nobody needs to. Ru if she would have said heck, nobody would have cared. Everybody would have went on. No mm -hmm. big deal. That's freedom of speech. That's popular speech. Nobody needs to protest that. She said hell. Okay, some people are angry about it, but that's when you protest. That's when you say, I may not like what she said, but I defend her right to say it because that's what we do. I mean, isn't that, I mean, I, I don't like in, any time a penalty is laid on speech. And that's all it is, is speech. She didn't call anybody a name. She didn't send anybody out in a group. I mean, there are a lot of horrible things you can do with regular language without any profanity that, that will make people look terrible. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the 
the area and uh, whether it's a religious area or I don't know this area. It was Colorado? Where was it? Yes. Colorado. Yes. Um, some of Colorado is pretty radical. Colorado Springs. Oh, wait, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oh, it's Oklahoma. Oklahoma, excuse me. Well, you see, you have to know the territory. The superintendent has to know the people. And maybe he's responding to how he should react to this in response to the people. So who knows? Who knows? Yeah. All I know is I hope, and I, uh, this is my opinion on this, I hope that they just give it to her and it would go away. We wouldn't even be talking about it if they hadn't put up this stink. It would have just been done. You know, how many people, now we all know she said hell. The whole world knows right. she said it now. Yeah, well, you know, anybody who watches this show is going to know. That's it. Everybody who watches, and everybody who watched the Today Show that morning is going to know she said hell, and, and it, you can't get rid of that now. If they had just given her a diploma, only the 300 people in that room would have known that she said it, and that would have been it. Then you have to think about what is the next valedictorian speech going to be, uh, or what are they going to put into their speech if it goes unchecked? Well, I don't think it should go unchecked. I just think you have to evaluate these things on a case-by-case -case level. And I think we, we maybe don't fight our battles over hell. Maybe we fight our battles over big words. What if she used a word? Now, I just ponder this. Heaven forbid. What if she used a word that is not a profanity word, but she used a word that was the name for a body part? <laughs> would that have now that's not profanity no now would that have been okay it wouldn't have been good no. it wouldn't have been good so see there we go again it's it's all it's all perception and who's listening right. you know I, who was it not too long barbara walders was trying to say a word on the air for a body part and they wouldn't let her say it they said you, you can't say she said well what am i supposed to say you know what is that right? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I just think you got to protect that speech. I think it's very important. Oh, did want to mention before we get on out of here that two, bi two very important people uh, died since we did this program. Neil Armstrong, first man to walk on the moon. My mm. goodness. Um, Alyssa, what, what do you think? That's a big deal. The first man to walk it on the moon is. dies. It is. It's so sad, but um, he, d he did great so, much, so many great things for our history, and it's, he's from Ohio. so. Absolutely. Yeah. Mary Ellen? Yes, he was a hero. Mm -hmm. Another great Ohioan, Phyllis Diller, yes. dies at 95. What, what do you think of that, Mary Ellen? Well, that w she was quite a, quite a comedian. Um, you know, it, it seems like there's been so many uh, deaths oh. in the last uh, few months, really. Uh, but she was way up in years. She had a good life. You know, I, I've been telling people this last week, I interviewed her a month ago, and turned out that was the last interview she ever gave. Mm -hmm. And she was so good to me over mm -hmm. the years. I had her on my program 30 times, and really? she was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that laugh, oh, I can still hear that laugh in my ear. It's such a funny woman. Alyssa, Aww. did you know who Phyllis Diller was? Honestly, no. Look her up when you get home. This I will. She was from Lima, Ohio. Mm -hmm. A very important first female to do stand-up comedy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, I liked uh, her reference to Fang. Her her husband was Fang. You know, I, I used to <laughs> tell Phyllis one of her. Fa I told her this many times. I said her my favorite joke she ever did was a Fang joke. She said <laughs> they asked Fang to be a Jehovah's Witness and he said he didn't see the accident. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that joke. And I'll tell you something. I want to do this on air before we get on out of here because it's kind of a tribute to Phyllis Diller who was just – I was on her Christmas card list. That's when I felt like, hey, I made it. I'm uh -huh. on Phyllis Diller's Christmas card list. The last time I interviewed her a month ago in celebration of her 95th birthday, we got to the end of the interview and I said, Phyllis, at 95, do you think about death? And she said, yeah, yeah, I do. I said, are you scared of it? And she said, oh, no, 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 no. She said, I've died three times. I'm an expert in it. And I said, oh, okay. And I said, uh, well, you know, where do you go when you die? And she said, you don't go anywhere. She said, you just go away. That's it. You pass out, and that's it. It's not, not pain or anything. And I had seen her on Celebrity Ghost Story on A&E, and I said, Phyllis, I said, you don't believe in heaven or an afterlife, but you believe in ghosts? And she says, well, for the money they paid me, I temporarily did. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Phyllis Diller. Yes. Funny, funny woman. Yeah. This has been fun. Alyssa McCracken, Mary Ellen Withrow, fun conversation on current events here on Scott Spears Now. See you next time.